हेलो गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम वैशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी एल एस आई टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द प्रोसेस इंटीग्रेशन एंड टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ आइसोलेशन इम्प्लांटेशन एज आई डिस्कस्ड इन द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस प्ले लिस्ट ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ आइसोलेशन फॉर्मेशन राइट सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ आइसोलेशन फर्स्ट इज ब्लैंकेट फील्ड ऑक्साइड आफ्टर दैट वी हैव लोकल ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ द सिलीकन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड लोकोज आफ्टर दैट वी हैव द शेलो ट्रेंच आइसोलेशन विच इज कॉल्ड द एस टी आई राइट ऑल ऑफ दैम आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल ऑफ दैम आर गोइंग टू आइसोलेट टू ट्रांजिस्टर्स टू मॉस्फेट और एनी टू कॉम्पोनेंट्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द चिप सो दीज टेक्निक आर रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द फेब्रिकेशन ऑफ अ चिप अदरवाइज ऑल कॉम्पोनेंट्स वुड गेट शॉर्टेड आउट एंड वी आर नॉट गेटिंग अ प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग फॉर अ गिवन चिप सो द फर्स्टली वी आर मूविंग टू वॉर्ड द ब्लैंकेट फील्ड ऑक्साइड इट वॉज यूज इन अर्ली ईयर्स ऑफ आई सी इंडस्ट्री एंड इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल एंड द स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड टेक्निक फॉर द ऑक्सीडेशन एज वेल एज फॉर द एचिंग वी आर यूजिंग द सिंपल टेक्निक्स ओवर हेयर राइट सो हेयर द थिकनेस इज डिटरमाइंड विद द वी एफ टी now we are taking the vft to be very greater than v to prevent the cross talking otherwise we would be having the cross talking also so this is how we will be having the locos formation so locos formation is done with the help of the silicon nitride layer as i have already told you whenever i am forming the silicon nitride i am beginning with the pad oxide layer so that the silicon nitride will not be giving too much stress on the p type substrate that is downside it right so here i will be having the silicon nitride layer below that i will be having pad oxide layer and below that we will be having the p type of substrate so we are starting with the wafer cleaning then we are going to grow the pad oxide then we are going to grow the nitride with the help of low pressure chemical vapor deposition after that we are going to form the mask one with the help of the photolithography process and this is the mask one that we have and with the help of first mask with the help of photolithography process i am going to etch the nitride from this particular position right so after that we are going to strip the photoresist layer also and after that we are going to form the isolation implantation this is the isolation layer of the boron it is made with the help of the ion implantation right so this is called the isolation implantation after that we can have the wet oxidation for the sio2 layer so now this sio2 layer is actually called the locos layer and this is called the locos formation right so this is how we have formed the local oxidation of the silicon and after that there is no need of this silicon nitride and we can remove the silicon nitride as well as the pad oxide so i hope you understood all of the steps for the locos formation so you can see first of all we are going to clean the wafer with the rca cleaning or any other cleaning technique after that we are going to have the pad oxidation layer then the lpcvd silicon nitride is coming on the pad oxide layer after that we have the photo resist with the help of the mask that we have the locos mask that we have we are going to remove the photo resist with the help of alignment and the exposure process so you can see we are having exposure process where we are going to expose this photo resist layer with the particular uv ray and this is how we will be having the removal of this layer first of all we are changing the characteristics of the exposed photoresist so that it will be removed easily with the help of the development process in the photolithography process so this is how we have made a mask over here now we are going to etch the nitride layer so this is how the mask is made till the p type substrate and the pad oxide layer right so after that we don't require the photoresist i am going to remove the photoresist first and then i will be having the isolation implantation where we will be having the implantation of p region right so with the help of boron i can make the isolation implantation in the p type substrate right and then we can have the thermal oxidation the wet oxidation and here we have formed the sio2 layer there is this problem of the bird's beak over here we have talked about it when i was talking about the oxidation right so after that there is no requirement of silicon nitride so we can easily strip the silicon nitride after this step now coming to the problems of the locos i told you the problem of the bird's beak so bird's beak is the problem because oxygen diffuses isotropically in the silicon dioxide it is having the same rate of the diffusion in the silicon dioxide at every direction so because of the same rate you can see there is this problem of this bird beak because here we will be having the higher penetration at this we have a bird's beak type of structure so this v type of structure is 
undesirable so it is a problem of the locus so oxide grow underneath nitride as well because of its isotropically diffusion nature inside the silicon dioxide so this is going to waste the surface area and we are going to get the uneven structure after the locus you can see here we have the upward structure of sio2 and here we have the downward structure so this is going to form uh, uneven structure so this is going to form a roughness on the structure also so oxide grow above the silicon surface and it is going to affect the photolithography and the thin film deposition in the afterward steps as well this is undesirable so you can see the bird's beak of locus actually the activation area is here right so here i need to form the locus but because of the isotropically distribution of the sio2 inside the silicon we have a higher uh, locus or higher sio2 area than the previously one so you can see i should require the activation area to be this one but because of the locus i have a smaller activation area now so activation area has reduced because of this right because sio2 is going to prevent some of the future processes like the diffusion and implantation it is going to prevent because of it and due to which i have a lesser activation area so now coming to the poly buffered locus so poly buffered is uh, locus is used to reduce the bird's beak problem here i am going to deposit polysilicon before the lpcvd nitride right so first of all i am going to deposit the polysilicon then i am going to deposit the nitride layer when i am going to deposit the polysilicon it is going to consume the lateral diffusion of the oxygen so that the beak type of problem that the in increase in the sio2 layer or sio2 area so the decrease in the sio2 area so that decrease in the activation area will not be there so it is going to consume the lateral diffusing oxygen and it is going to reduce the bird's beak to 0.1 micrometer from 0.2 micrometer hence we are increasing the activation area so you can see the poly buffered locus over here you can see here we have the pad oxidation then we have the polysilicon and the nitride deposition right so first of all we have the pad oxidation then polysilicon layer then the silicon nitride layer right after that we are going to etch out the nitride with the help of photolithography we have ma made the mask and after that we are going to etch the nitride the particular location after that we are going to have the isolation implantation after that we are going to have the oxidation you can see when i am doing the oxidation the bird's peak problem is significantly reduced and after that i am going to strip off the pad oxide the polysilicon as well as the nitride layer so this is how i can form the isolation with the help of poly buffered locus process now coming to the shallow trench isolation the locus and the pbl work fine when the feature size is bigger when the feature size is greater than 0.5 micrometer i can use locus and pbl but when the feature size is lesser than that or when the feature size is lesser than 0.35 micrometer then these two methods are intolerable because activation area is going to reduce a lot so silicon etching and the oxidation of the trench was researched to reduce the oxide encroachment and then a new process was then developed which was sti with cvd oxide trench fill so now the difference between sti and the locus in the sti we were not having any bird's beak problem we were having the smoother surface and we were having more process steps so the first two are the advantages the last one is a disadvantage now coming to the locus locus is simpler cheaper and the production proven method it is used only in the fabrication where the feature size is lesser than 0.35 micrometer right it cannot be used with a smaller feature size so early sti processes were using oxide etch back processes with the help of cf4 and o2 chemistry and how we were finding out the end point with the help of cn lines so now the advanced sti process will be using the oxide cmp the chemical metallical polishing and here we will be having the better process control and the higher yield than the early sti processes so you can see first of all we are going to clean the wafer then the pad oxide layer the silicon nitride layer and then the photo resist layer we are forming the mask you can see this is the mask that we have used after that sti mask alignment 
yes the place where i want uh, the mask the removal of the photo resist or the silicon nitride so here i will be placing the mask this is called the mask alignment and after that we are going to expose it with the light or the uv ray so that we will be having the change in the characteristics of the photo resist this is the exposure phase after that we are removing the photo resist at the desirable location after that we are going to etch out the nitride as well as the pad oxide and after that we are going to strip off the photo resist as well so we have made the mask so this is a similar process that we have already discussed in the locos as well after that we are going to etch the silicon you can see we have etched the silicon over here after that we are going to grow a barrier oxide layer which is a very thin layer so this black layer is a barrier oxide layer right after that we are, we will be having the channel stop implantation with the help of the boron so this is uh, the p type of structure highly doped p type of structure that is formed in the p type of substrate it is called the channel stop implantation so after that we will be having the cvd oxide growth with the help of chemical vapor deposition i am going to grow the oxide layer after that we will be having the photo resist coating so you can see we have made the coating of the photo resist over here again i am going to strip off the photo resist and the oxide etch back also so that we are going to stop on the silicon nitride so where we have to stop we have to stop on the silicon nitride and the oxide layer so here when i am reaching to the silicon nitride i have to find out the stop and this is how i am calculating the end point so you can see after that i can strip off the nitride as well it is undesirable you can see after that we will be having the photo resist coating and after that we will be having the oxide etch back process so that we will be having a even structure over here right so here we will not be having any roughness present so roughness is highly reduced if i am using the sti process than the locos process so after that we are going to form the annealing and after annealing this uh, penetration of the p region is going to increase so the depth is going to increase and after that we will be having the future steps so advanced sti what is advanced sti here we don't need the channel uh, stop ion implantation to raise the field threshold voltage here we can use the trench fill so trench fill can also be achieved with the ozone teos process i hope you understand what is ozone teos cvd process i had already talked about it in the chemical vapor deposition process but it needs the annealing at a greater than 1000 degree celsius to densify the film so after that we can use hdp oxide which does not require the thermal annealing okay so now coming to the pad oxidation and the lp cvd nitride layer so you can see first of all i have made the pad oxide layer and the low pressure chemical vapor deposition of the nitride right so after that we can use the sti mask after that we can etch nitride oxide and the silicon and then we can strip photo resist as well so you can see we have just the nitride layer we have etched all of uh, the things over here for photo resist the nitride and the silicon as well so now this is the mask that we have formed and after that we can fill it with the usg usg is undoped silicate glass right so this is the high density plasma chemical vapor deposition so with the help of high density plasma chemical vapor deposition i am going to deposit the usg layer after that we can use the cmp uh, process to remove this layer and then it stops how we, we are going to find out the end point with the help of the nitride layer so where i am going to get the interface of the nitride there i am going to stop this is the end point after that we are going to strip off the nitride as well so you can see we have formed the usg layer over here so i hope you understood all of these processes that i have discussed if you still have any doubt you can refer these books or you can put the doubt in the comment these are really amazing books for your further revision as well i hope you will be referring these books and i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share your feedback and share it with your friends as well thank you so much